This seems to be from a pop culture rag called Duke's Boy, and it allegedly explains why Henry Cavill has left The Witcher. And of course, it's from anonymous source, so take it with a grain of salt, but I am willing to believe what is being said here because it collaborates with things we already know and things that were linked into the press previously. So apparently, the person says that, uh, do you know what really went down? And I was like, sure. At the beginning of the show, Harry was good to work with. A lot of unusual demands that made people feel like he wasn't really a team player, but that's not unusual for a big star. Though in TV, it's truly unusual. This seems to be from a pop culture rag called Duke's Boy, and it allegedly explains why Henry Cavill has left The Witcher. And of course, it's from anonymous source, so take it with a grain of salt, but I am willing to believe what is being said here because it collaborates with things we already know and things that were linked into the press previously. So apparently... The person says that, uh, do you know what really went down? And I was like, sure. At the beginning of the show, Harry was good to work with. A lot of unusual demands that made people feel like he wasn't really a team player, but that's not unusual for a big star. Though in TV, this usually happens by season two and three. However, something shifted and he became really impossible for women to work with. He would try to overrule her and try to get changes made last minute across the board without her knowledge. Which, if you know anything about showrunning, it is completely fucked. The showrunner has to sign off on every minuscule detail down to the buttons of a costume. Female writers and directors were suddenly completely ignored on set, unable to do their jobs. Now, the reason I'm willing to believe this is that a couple of months ago, we had an article coming out regarding of how Henry Cavill changed something from the show, and it ended up being great. You see, when they killed the Witcher's horse, they wanted to make this as a punchline for a joke. They, they wanted to do like one of those Marvel one-liners. They, they wanted to say something quirky, to which Henry Cavill said, hold on a little bit, that's not lore-friendly. I read the books. I know that Geralt would never make a joke if his horse died. So the showrunner goes like, okay, you write the dialogue then. And then Geralt writes it. Turns out that the scene became very emotional. All the fans loved it. So it does seem like he had a lot of input in the show because he was a legitimate fan. And this didn't fly very well with the people that were placed there who we know that not only do not like the show, who have stated not being fans of the book, but also to show disgust, disdain towards the fans. So this is where all of this friction is coming from. And, and they're saying, oh, well, it's because, you know, he doesn't work well with women. He doesn't work well with anti-fans. And it just so happens that at Netflix, the people placed in charge of the production were all anti-fans and they happened to be women. But this doesn't mean that, oh, well, he wouldn't get along with a woman that actually liked the show, that actually knew what the fuck she was doing. Like, this guy was bending in order to make the money. Everyone that watches Witcher knows that he was carrying the show. So this is what actually is happening here. It's not the fact that, oh, well, it's, he doesn't work well with women. No, he doesn't work well with anti-fans. And I definitely understand where he is coming from. Apparently, every department head was complaining. He started making comments. And look at this. It wasn't a sexual thing. He wasn't grabbing anyone or being lewd. But he was disrespectful and toxic. Oh, man, disrespectful. He was making you money, idiots. Like, I, look, if I had the person that I would hire on my channel, right? And, and you know, I have, let's say, 100,000 subscribers. And this guy comes in and, and he tells me to make some changes. And all of a sudden, I have 300,000 subscribers and I'm making money. You know what I do? I shut the fuck up. He can be the most toxic asshole on the face of the earth. I don't give a shit. Like, if you're making me money and, and I look at my subscribers, they're all happy. That they're all content, you know, like I, I'm making content, everyone is... Why would I care? Oh my god, he's toxic. Oh, 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 Dios mio. Oh, the, to the toxicity. He's deeply addicted to video games. To the point where it was like working with any other addict. Yeah, like if you're making a... Fucking hell, man. If you're making a TV show that's related to video games. And you have this guy that's like addicted to video... That's a good thing. You want that. Like you're... You're making a product for people addicted 
to video games, right? Like, wouldn't you want someone from the inside? Why would you want someone that's judgmental? It's like, oh my god, look at all these people addicted to video games and we're making Witcher the TV show. Ah, oh, so disgusting. Look at them watching our show. Oh, it is so icky. Look at them purchasing our merchandise now. Uh, instead of going out and touching grass, they're watching The Witcher. This is the mentality from the show creators, right? They do not like the fans. They are disgusted by the fans, but they want to make money from the fans. Of course, you know, you have to tie it in with a little bit of uh, our Anon conspiracy. He would rewrite scenes without even alerting the other actors in the scenes until it was time to shoot. He decided that he didn't want any romantic scenes at all. No kissing, no shirtless scenes. Oh my fucking god. No pointless romantic scenes? That's like the gas chambers, isn't it? Oh, no, no. And, and by the way, if this was a woman, if Henry Cavill was a woman, and he, he, she would say, you know, I don't want any more romantic sex scenes. I don't want any boobies. Oh my god. Oh, that is so progressive, you queen. Yes, go slay. Oh, America culture. Oh, California. Oh, oh. But, but when it's a man doing it, Oh, such a horrible piece of shit. Oh my god, like how how dare he? How dare he not want any more sex scenes? He formed a weird alliance with one writer who was also a gamer. I I'm starting to notice a theme here, do you? Who eventually got fired after multiple HR complaints. My fucking god, so funny how it keeps happening, right? It's it's the people who like the IP and make you money that keep getting up fired with HR complaints. It, 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 wow, like, so interesting. And after that writer left, Henry did anything he could to hold up production and cause problems. Eventually, Tom Brass at Netflix was tired of him costing the money with delays in HR investigations. So, in other words, they kept investigating him with HR and they couldn't find shit. They couldn't find shit on him, so, so they had to fire him anyway. This is so fucking lovely, right? Like, th this is the culture at Netflix. They hire you if you hate the fans and the IP. The moment they have someone that loves the fans or the IP, they will sick HR on them. I mean, th th this seems to be how it works. And, and even if HR doesn't find anything, after a while they just give up and they fire you regardless. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. And if you want to support the channel, there's a link into the pinned comment section. It will take you to my subscribe star. Every little bit of donation helps. I would very much appreciate it. I need to remember to shill myself every now and then because I keep forgetting. It's kind of hilarious. There's people asking me to do sponsorships on my channel. And I'm like, dude, are you insane? I can't sponsor myself. Let alone someone else. Also, I make a live stream on my live stream channel every day. So uh, maybe you can find me there if you're interested in interacting with me live. And I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care.